a mineral. So minerals are what make up rocks. And we can see these little cubes in here. They're geothite. They were pyrite, so they were that shiny, silvery, uh, cute little fellas. Um, now the pyrite has been weathered out of the rock and left these gaps in them in the perfect cuby shapes and the geothites moved in and been deposited in those. Uh, so what happened is maybe the, there was some hot water coming through and dissolved the pyrite. Lots of little quartz crystals in here. So there's probably a little bit of a gap, had hot water moving through and they were depositing atom by atom by atom to make those crystals. So a mineral, a very specific definition. So naturally occurring, inorganic, so not made by life, so shells are not minerals, homogeneous, which means kind of the same the whole way through with a definite, though there can be some minor variations in that, a definite chemical composition, so quartz is silicon dioxide, one silicon, two oxygen, that's a definite chemical composition, and an ordered atomic arrangement. Now, in order to have an ordered atomic arrangement, that means you're forming crystals. Now sometimes we'll see a mineral, it's hard to tell that there are crystals there, but if you look at it at a, at a really uh, microscopic level, you can, actually, you can still see the crystals forming. So a crystal is a reg, regular geometric solid. So that's a regular, forms a specific shape. That's, there's lots of little specific crystals in here. They're all the same essential shape. Uh, they can sometimes be a little bit, but generally, a little bit of variation depending on the conditions for the for crystals to grow in um, different temperatures, things like that, or different amount of room could make a difference. Um, so the regular geometry is called the habit. So the crystal shape is called the habit, and that's the orderly atomic arrangement, and rocks are made from minerals. So if you wanted to look this one up, uh, copper sulfate crystals forming under the microscope, you can jump on YouTube and have a look at that. I don't think I put it in the links. I just put the main ones in there, but that's pretty cool. You can actually see them forming their specific habit. So, rocks are made of minerals. We can see there are three different minerals in this one. We've got a potassium feldspar, which is this pink one. We've got quartz. Often you'll see quartz and it'll just be white, but this is quartz. With, looks like smoky quartz. Something else is in there. And hornblende is the third mineral. So generally, when we're looking at this rock, we can really only see three minerals. Um, there's probably a, you know, little ones here and there, but m mostly it's made up of these three specific minerals. And that's a granite, so that's your intrusive or plutonic igneous rock. So, eight most common chemical elements in the crust on Earth. Ox oxygen, silicon, aluminium, iron, calcium, sodium, pota potassium and magnesium. So, most of the minerals at Earth's surface have lots of oxygen and silicon in them. So we have a lot of sand, a lot of quartz. Quartz is silicon dioxide. We can see why that there's a lot of it because that's pretty much 70 odd percent of the crust is made of ice. And you're probably thinking 46% oxygen, but oxygen's a gas. Yeah, well, it's a gas when it's on its own, but when it's in a when it's in a compound, like think about H2O, think about water. It's got oxygen in it and hydrogen. They're both gases, but they become a liquid or a solid if it's cold enough. Um, anyway, so. Lots of oxygen and silicon in the crust, but so continental crust. Ah, that's just the same thing again. What are you doing, skilling? So this is a Michael Samarento video uh, about minerals. You should go and watch that one. You can listen to this slide first if you want. I don't mind. This is pretty cool. This is in the Melbourne Museum. These guys are like 15 centimeters across, maybe even bigger. They were huge uh, in this bit of this bit of uh, mudstone it looks like. Um, that's stunning, yeah. This is at Karajini National Park and we can see that this asbestos has formed in the layer. So that's a an, uh, a chemical sedimentary rock, even though it's, it's a mineral as well. I don't really like the term chemical sedimentary rock because really they're just minerals in a rock. But anyway, whatever makes people happy. Yeah, so it's asbestos. It's perfectly safe so long as you don't grind it up and breathe it in. So if you ever see asbestos, don't freak out unless it's in powder form and then stay away from it. Okay, so again, beautiful chemistry. Uh, that's, a, that's pretty nice. Again, we're just looking at crystallization uh, and shape. So you could look up salt crystals forming under the microscope. 
and you should be able to find that one. Okay, so how about this is pyrite. See how I was saying before, sometimes they've got a couple of different shapes that they'll form in. So these are our cubes, and these form in... Oh man, I don't know what to call that shape. Something he drawn, I'm sure. So physical properties of minerals. So how do we identify them from each other? So the colour is a first impression. Unfortunately, colour is not very reliable. Lots of minerals can occur in many different colours. So quartz, lots of different types of quartz, and they can all be different colours, but they're all pretty much they're pretty much exactly the same chemically. Just with one element here or there different, which which produces the colour. And here we can see fluorite. Look at all these different colours. These are natural. And here we have quartz. So we've got smoky quartz here, we've got amethyst here, yes, amethyst is pretty much just quartz, purple quartz. Uh, there's normal quartz and, man, I don't know what that's called. Maybe smoky quartz as well. Black quartz. So the true colour of a mineral is its streaks, so sometimes you'll see the outside colour of a mineral. Uh, it'll be something, and then the actual streak. So hemocyte is a black looks black from the outside but when you scratch it on a tile the powder is red so streak is reliable color is not you can use them together to give you an indication if it's black and it's got a red streak chances are it's hematite so hematite's a mineral uh, it's got lots of iron in it okay so this is pyrite so it's a bit goldy and it has a gray streak so this is like a, a, a porcelain plate that you scratch and it's obviously harder than the mineral itself. Some minerals that are really hard, you can't get a powder, you can't get a streak for them because uh, all they do is scratch the plate. Uh, quartz is pretty hard. I think quartz, from about quartz, they're all too hard. So when I'm talking about hardness, this is what I mean. So quartz down is going to be too hard to scratch the plate. Now there are some tests we can do. Um, to work out the hardness of a mineral. Uh, essentially, you're just trying to scratch it. So if you've got something that scratches, um, so if you, if you actually just get a bit of corundum and topaz there, or corundum and quartz, and it can stra scratch quartz, but it can't scratch corundum, there's a good chance it's topaz, or at least something that's as hard as topaz. Talc is really soft. So if you ever touch talc, you can just rip it apart with your fingernails, gypsum as well. And let me start to get into other ones. So, um, yeah, if you end up doing a practical around that, you'll, you'll learn what they are. But just knowing that a property of a mineral is its hardness, and this is Mohs hardness scale. Here's another look, but we can see it's not linear. So diamond isn't 10 times as hard as talc. Talc's like down here, and diamond's like way up here. So talc's almost zero, and diamond is at over 80. So probably, maybe that's 0.1. Diamond would be 800 times uh, as hard as talc. So we can see that it, it's not like, doesn't go up one by one by one. Uh, so we can see fingernail can scratch gypsum and talc, but not calcite. So a copper penny, so a copper coin can scratch calcite and gypsum and talc, but it cannot scratch fluorite. So if you've got a white or a light colored, glassy colored mineral, and you can't scratch it with a copper penny, it's fluorite or above. So the streak plate cannot scratch quartz. Quartz will just scratch into it. But orthoclase, so it's another light colored mineral, it looks like quartz, they're both white, but if you if, it's, if it leaves some powder on the streak plate, you know that it's orthoclase and that it's not quartz. Um, that's one specific test we can do. Luster, how light shines of a mineral. So glassy, otherwise known as vitreous. So that's a real crystal type resinous. You probably got a good idea of resin. Uh, and metallic is your kind of shiny metal looking things. The, the issue with luster is um, it needs to be fresh, if that makes any sense. Uh, so this is galena, and galena rusts. So when it's out in the air, it starts rusting on the outside. So you've got to break it open, and then you can see uh, the true luster of it. Event That's going to tarnish really reasonably quickly. So. so here are some of the lusters. You can pause it here to have a look if you would like. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, in fact, these aren't all of them. I've just kind of like gone with the ones that I like. So if you've ever seen graphite, that's like your pencil lead. So your pencil lead's not lead at all, it's graphite with clay. And we can see that if you pull it out, it's kind of greasy. 
Well, the clay is kind of stopping it being as greasy. If you've just got pure graphite, a pure lump of graphite, it actually feels, uh, it feels and looks greasy. Okay, so here's some lusters. You can pause that and have a look at it if you want. I'm going to keep going. Special properties. So calcite, if you put a little bit of weak acid on it, will bubble, have a chemical reaction. This is called twinning. At year eight level, you're not going to really worry about this too much. Fluorescence is cool. So if you put it, if you go in the dark room and shine UV light on it, uh, you get a fluorescence effect. Phosphorescence is when it keeps glowing after the light's removed, so it absorbs some of the energy. Um, fluorescence is just when it does it when the light's on. So it could be a little bit magnetic as well. So attracted to a magnet, uh, iron, cobalt, and nickel are the three magnetic elements. Now, just because it's got iron in it doesn't mean it's magnetic, uh, but um, magnetite and hematite are, are quite magnetic. So this is fluorescence. So I took these minerals home. Here's the UV lamp, um, and that's pretty cool, isn't it? A few different ones there. Transparency, so the ability for light to go through it. This is cool, this is called double refraction. So it means you've got like a mirror image. Well, not a mirror image, you've just got a repeat of it. Um, Calcite's pretty cool. And gypsum's almost, when, when you've got a little bit of gypsum, um, it can be like a magnifying glass. So it changes the speed of the light, which, which causes that refraction. You'll learn more about that in year nine physics. Piezoelectric means you put pressure on it. Again, these aren't ones, maybe the transparency is probably one that you'd, you'd think about. Sometimes geologists will taste a rock <laughs> to see. Halite obviously tastes salty. So here's transparency. Uh, it's kind of translucent. We'll let some light through and opaque means no light goes through. Okay. So sometimes when we burn an element, we get a specific color. If you want to have a look. If you want to read this and try and understand it, you can go right ahead. That's, that's year 9, year 10 level stuff. But if I was there in the room with you, I'd explain it. So, identifying minerals. If you could look at the Michael Samaranto video about that. And then look at the final rocks and minerals video. 